Hello there, this is Don in South Carolina. We're going to tie another fly today. This one came out in Fly Tire Magazine. This this pattern came out in Fly Tire Magazine, I don't know, one or two years ago. I can't remember exactly how long. But it's a great bass fly called a sneaky duck. And this thing does work. It does catch nice bass. And if any of you know me at all, you know that I fish ultralight fly rod 95% of the time at least. And so, after fishing this great pattern on a heavier rod, I said I have got to scale it down. And I came up with this little guy. Sort of a sneaky duck junior, a sneaky duckling I guess you could call it. But that works very, very well too. Uh, the brim, the copperhead brim, they'll inhale that thing. And you can tie these in a bunch of different color combination, only limited by your imagination. Uh, I've tied some, I found this foam sheet in frog pattern, and I've tied some in that that works very well too. So for the sneaky duckling, the uh, I've got my hooking device here. I'm going to go ahead and put a thread base down. Then we'll talk about how I cut these discs. Because that's the only thing that's a little bit unusual with this fly. And it's not hard to do. I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Thread base down there. Get a little more tension on this bobbin. There we go. Uh, the first thing, let's go ahead and tie in a tail. And you can use uh, strands of rubber legs. Uh, you could use deer hair. You could use a little bit of whatever you wanted. I like to use just a little bit of marabou. It seems to have as good an action in the water as anything. And we don't need a big tail for this little guy. So, we're going to tie a little tail on right here. There we go. That's all we need. Cut that off. And we can leave our thread right back here. Actually, we want to build a little hump up right here where we tied the tail on. We want to take thread and wrap it and build a hump. And I'll show you why here in a second. But we want that to be higher, a little bit higher than the rest of the hook shank. Okay. Now to cut these discs, nice little round disc. You try cutting them out with a scissor by hand, they, they just don't come out round. I cut them in different sizes depending on the size of the fly. This is actually is what I use for the bigger sneaky ducks, the heavier ones. And for size 12, I use these. This is actually 263 thousandths across this little guy. And I'll show you how I do that. And these are 308, 308 thousandths across, and that might give you a hint to what I'm using to cut them. This is 451. I use a cartridge case, and depending on the size of the fly, this is for a 30 caliber carbine. That's what we're going to be using today, and to cut these discs, this is a reloader's tool, but anything you could use to sharpen the inside of the mouth of the case is all you need. Normally, for a, car, for a bullet, all you do is a couple, three turns of this to give the case mouth a little bevel so the bullet goes into case easier. But in our case, we're going to give it several good turns. We're going to sharpen up that bevel so that it's, it, it makes the case of the mouth very sharp. And then with the magazine laying on the table, you take your foam, and you can see where I've cut, cut a bunch of them out, and just a couple wraps with this, with any kind of a little light hammer or a mallet or anything, and you don't have to hit it hard if your case is sharp. 
and it cuts a perfectly round disc and that's what we need for this guy and to start with we're going to tie the first one in here zoom in just a little bit or not there we go and we read we made this little hump because we want this first disc to rest on that hump and all we're going to do is tie in the very front of this disc onto the hook and pull your thread pretty tight and just anchor it down just like that and that's the first one now we're just going to take and stack. Here's the next one. Going to snack, stack it right on in front of the other one, leaning up against it really, and tie it down good. And try to keep it centered on the top of the hook as much as you can. Now we're going to tie in another one the same way. And four is really enough, but I'm going to tie one more into this one. We got plenty of room up here. Just make it float a little better. And you can make the front disc a different color than the rest if you would like. This one is going to be all this green. All right. Alright, there's our little guy. Now, just going to take our finishing tool. Two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. There we go. Snip this off. Okay, now we're going to put some legs on him. What did I do with my rubber legs here? Here they are. And it doesn't need a lot for this little guy. We're just going to cut a little piece here. Let's see, let's make one about this long and then cut it in half. Now all we're going to do with this, we'll pull this in right between the second and third disc, just like that. We're going to do the same thing with this one between the first and second disc. Pull it down in there, keep them about the same length, and even level as you can. And then, I can do this. Let's see here. I'm going to put a little CA glue it don't take much at all. I'm going to put it down between these discs around that little strand of rubber leg. It doesn't take but a little bit. Just smear it on the disc and a little bit on the rubber leg. Like so. And while we've got the CA going here, we're going to turn it upside down and put a little bit on the threads where we wrapped and tied it off here, just like that. It has a very unique look from underneath. The red thread gives it kind of a red belly. And now, I like to give it some eyes. 
some kind of long eyes on this guy. Sort of like that. And that is the sneaky duckling. And you'll find that it will catch fish very, very well. And it's fun to tie to. So there you have it. Good luck. Good fishing. I hope you give this fly a try. It really was meant for a much larger bass fly. But scaling it down, if you kind of uh, don't go overboard, it makes a good brim fly too. So until next time, this is Don of South Carolina. See you later.